Hi there, I'm Ken Sanders. This episode is going to feature one of the absolute favorite river runners tales of all time. Vaughn Short was considered to be the Robert Service of the Canyon Country. And he wrote two volumes of published poems in his life. Uh, he was a legendary river runner and storyteller. Um, oh, uh, ah, here we go. Um, his first volume of stories and tales is called Raging River Lonely Trails uh, by Vaughn Short. Tales told by the campfire's glow. Uh, there's a lot of fun, hilarious poems to read in this book. It's beautifully illustrated. Um, and this, hey, look at that. This copy's autographed by Vaughn Short. He was, he was a heck of a guy, and from him, many of many, many generations of river men and river women running rapids of the Grand Canyon, the Colorado, the Green, the San Juan, and more. Every river person worth their salt has a copy of this book in their ammo can. And this one's actually in pretty good condition as opposed to many copies that I've run into over the years. I'm going to read uh, his poems. Well, he has a few short ones. I'm going to read my the most famous poem. He's got seldom seen in his macho crew. He's got so many good ones. But we have to read Floyd's Void. And if you don't know who Floyd is, you're going to. Columbus was the first tourist. He's just, he's got some, he's, what a sense of humor. If you've ever run any of the rivers of the West and don't know this book, this is your opportunity. Okay. <clears throat> he's got a little uh, intro to it. I'll read that first. This is the introduction to Floyd's Void by Vaughn Short. Around the driftwood campfires along the Colorado River, Glen Canyon Dam gets a lot of discussion. Any boatman worth his salt can tell you the location of Dominey Falls, that huge rapid that exists only in wishful thinking. It is formed by the rubble of a demolished Glen Canyon Dam. You see, not everyone is madly in love with the concrete barrier that forms Lake Powell. Now, it can't be denied that the dam still stands firm and staunch, but people have the right to dream. So the talk goes on. This rebellious thinking helps a lot to relieve frustrations as, as the bureaucratic red tape piles ever higher upon the free-spirited river boating people. Talking, talk, talk of blowing the dam is a fun game, not unlike Monopoly. A person become, can become a millionaire many times over in a lifetime of playing Monopoly and still have patches on his jeans. So it is with the dam. It is a fascinating subject, however, and it occupies some very keen minds. <clears throat> Back during the construction of the dam, the opposition didn't fare too well. Some of the boatmen down in Glen cursed and paused the sand a bit, but actually the Bureau of Reclamation had very smooth sailing. It was headed by Floyd Dominey, who was a very capable director. He had the weight of his bureaucracy behind him, and he used it to his advantage. The politicians and the states involved stood solidly for the project. The government had plenty of slick paper and colored ink to pour, pour forth its propaganda. To the uninformed, it seemed that before the dam, Glen Canyon could be enjoyed only by the very rich. In actuality, nowhere else in the Colorado River canyons could the water be negotiated with greater ease or with such modest equipment. Commercial trips were a real bargain. Even during the heavy trip demands of the final season, you could still get a trip for a hundred bucks. A little more or less, depending on the outfitter. Rainbow Bridge in those days was a moving experience, a true monument to solitude. With the trace of satire, the poem Floyd's Void was written as a rebuttal to Bureau propaganda and in protest of the indignation of Glen, the most tranquil and beautiful canyon anywhere. 
The old Glen Canyon was full of treasures, aside from its green shorelines and towering red cliffs. It contained a wealth of archaeological sites. The ancient Moki had dwelt within its walls, and the cliff houses and writings were numerous. In the poem that follows are a few place names, Gregory Natural Bridge, Hidden Passage, Dungeon Canyon, and Music Temple get a mention. These represent only a few of the many outstanding attractions covered by the water, the muck, and the gook of Lake Powell. Floyd's Void. There's a breed of men who sit at their desk and they like their water tame. They like to dam the rivers up, then give the lakes a name. They do. Then give the lakes a name. So th give three cheers for the Bureau boys and a special raw for Floyd. He built his dam and he built it well. And then he said, in spite of hell, I'm going to fill that void. I am. I'm going to fill that void. Now within this void created by Floyd was a special thing or two, reserved for the sight of the filthy rich and a very greedy few they were. Very greedy few. So give three cheers for the Bureau boys and a special raw for Floyd. For Floyd did say, I'll change this plan. I'll open it up for the common man. I will. I'll open it up for the common man. What value the trees, what value the grasses compared to the rights of the downtrodden masses? Floyd said, I'll make it so easy. I'll make it so simple. They can all speed their boats over Music Temple. How about that? So give three cheers for the Bureau boys. And a special raw for Floyd. For now we know beneath the blue is a revered spot once seen by few. How sad. Before Floyd's void, seen only by few. To see the rainbow, aloof, remote, you had to hike or you had to float. Denied it was to that jolly old chap by his houseboat rail and his yachting cap. Oh, my poor old chap in his yachting cap. So give three cheers for the Bureau boys and a special raw for Floyd. Floyd said we'll put the water there for this deserving old man in his easy chair, for he's entitled to his just share. He is. He's entitled to his just share. If one should insist on making a list of the many granders there, there were Gregory Dungeon, Hidden Passage, and many more. I swear, oh yes, there were many more, I swear. So give three cheers for the Bureau boys and a special raw for Floyd. He buried them all deep under his lake, but he did it for the people's sake. He did. He did it for the people's sake. For the power-hungry man with the dollar sign eyes who lights up the neon in the evening skies. For the poor downtrodden in his speeding boat. For the jolly old chap in his yachting cap who had no water to float. Poor guy. He had no water to float. So give three cheers for the Bureau boys. And a special raw for Floyd. Though he buried the Moki and he shortened a wall, he did it for the good of all. He did. He did it for the good of all. But there's a breed of men, both hardy and free, who lie at night on the lonely bars and there beneath the glittering stars. They dream of TNT. They do. They dream of T and T. So give three cheers for the Bureau boys and a special raw for Floyd. He built his dam and though he built it well, these dreamers swear in spite of hell, they're gonna void Floyd's void. They are. They're gonna void Floyd's void. They dream of a mighty boom and a quake. They dream of a swirl in a vanishing lake. They dream of a river wild and three. 
freed from its shackles by TNT, sweet bliss, freed from its shackles by TNT. Now, let's have three cheers for the boys on the bars who dream their dreams neath the glittering stars, who dream of a wild and a wonderful treat. A houseboat running, Domini falls at a million second feet. Ah, yes, a houseboat running, Domini falls at a million second feet.